How's it going, everybody? I'm Steve, and welcome back. So a lot of you may know Barnes & Noble just started their Criterion 50% off a sale and started on November 1st, and it runs through December 2nd. So I just want to let people know that, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's exciting. They, they, they do sales uh, like in July, November. So I always like to take advantage of those. Uh, obviously, they're, they're so expensive that <laughs> whenever you get a 50% off sale, you're going to get a good price, you know, at least like $20 for Blu-rays and, and $25 for 4 k So uh, just to let people know that. So I, actually, this past Saturday, I picked up uh, actually two titles. And I actually have like, I have like three other titles that I've I picked up over the last couple of months because I, I don't do uh, Criterion videos every month. It seems like you know, the people really watch them during like the, the two flash sales that Criterion does. Uh, I think usually like February and October. And then people watch the videos uh, that I do for Barnes and Noble in November and, you know, in, Ju in July. But besides that, I, the videos don't really do that well. So I, I've, I've uh, kind of stockpiled like three other videos, you know, other, other movies here. Okay, so I'm going to show these titles. Actually, I'm going to show the poster on the side, and they're, they're going to be numbered one through five. They're, these aren't ranked at all. I just uh, keep them numbered so you can kind of keep track where I am in the video. But uh, this, this first movie was actually one that was uh, recommended to me from uh, Megan Mike, the movie man. We did a like a, a like a Barnes and Noble presale, you know, a Criterion presale last Friday on the first, and he, he recommended this movie to me, and I'm really glad he did because I, I I really enjoyed this. But it's uh, this is from 1991, spine number 1071. And the movie is Defending Your Life. This one is actually, it's, a, it's a directed by Albert Brooks. He was actually a co-star and he, he wrote this uh, the story as well. But uh, I, I like this movie a lot though. I, 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 I know him from, you know, basically from broadcast news. Uh, I've, seen, I've seen him in other movies before. I've always thought he's really funny. He's, he's a stand-up comedian as well. But uh, this one actually is a, you know, co-starring uh, Meryl Streep. It has a Rip Torn, if you ever saw the uh, Larry Sanders show, he used to be on that show. Also has a uh, Lee Grant. I thought she's really good in this movie. But, um, this movie, it, it's there's a lot of great humor in the movie. Kind of, you know, sort of a dark uh, subject matter, but really kind of the, the way that it, it's told is really uh, really funny. And uh, I, I I love this. You know, it, it, as far as uh, Albert Brooks, it, it says a lot about somebody that's uh, you know like middle aged that uh, doesn't take you know life uh, as seriously as I should. And now now he actually has a chance to kind of. Uh, kind of extend his life in some ways, but. Okay, so the second title is actually, it was one released in 2023, and I, I didn't catch it in the theater. I, I really wanted to, but I think it may have had like a limited release last year, but this is uh, spine number 1226, and the movie is Perfect Days. This one's actually, it's a Japanese movie, but it's it's actually directed by a German director, uh, Vim Vendors, uh, if you ever saw like uh, Paris, Texas, he, he directed that one. I think he did like Wings of, of Desire as well. I, I haven't seen that movie yet, but. Uh, but I, I really like Paris, Texas quite a bit. But uh, what, what's really interesting about this, it has, uh, it, it's in Japanese, but it, it, but it's very limited on, on, on dialogue. It's not, not driven by di dialogue. If you know uh, Japanese films, a lot of them are very visual oriented. Uh, but uh, it has a lot of like American music in the movie. It has like uh, Lou Reed and the Kinks, Van Morrison, has uh, Nina Simone, uh, if you know the song uh, Feeling Good, really good. I mean, it may have like maybe three or four Japanese songs in the movie as well, but but like I said, it's very light on, on, the, on the Japanese cult, you know, culture, and it's a very simple story about a like middle-aged man. Uh, I thought the the main star in the movie was really good, uh, Koji y Yakushu. It's hard to pronounce that, but uh, I thought it was really good in the movie. And there's some there's one scene that happens in the movie I thought was a mistake, and I think it ends up ended up being not not a mistake. Uh, to, there was like a cut where uh, I don't really give it away so much, but it, I think it was there on purpose. And originally I thought it was there by mistake and, and they, they just cut to, to try to salvage the, the scene, but I think it was actually there on purpose. But but the, the movie, I, I didn't think it was quite as, as great as I was hoping it, it would be, but, but I think I, was, I thought it was really charming and, and it's uh, definitely something worth checking out. Okay, so this third title is actually uh, one I've had for a few months now. It's uh, released in 1966, uh, spine number 667. So if you know, uh, Del Toro has the movie Devil's Backbone, that's uh, spine number 666. So I don't know if this one was uh, released, you know, like the, the, in the same month as, as that one, but it's a it's a the spine number right after that. But uh, but the movie is Seconds, uh, very interesting movie. Uh, it's uh, directed by John Frankenheimer. Uh, I like this a lot. It's actually starring Rock Hudson as uh, Murray Hamilton. If you remember the 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 mayor and uh, you know and Jaws and Jaws Two, that that guy. He's he's in, he's not really in the movie a lot, but uh, he's he's in a few scenes and kind of impactful in the scenes he's in and kind of important to the story as well. But the, but this one's very, very odd. It, it kind of, 
maybe in some ways, it, it, to, to some ways, it kind of reminds me of uh, Eyes Without a Face. In some ways, uh, not not exactly the same, but it's it, it's it's kind of reminds me of that in some ways. But it, like I said, it's not it's not the same. But th this one's actually in English. Obviously, Rock Hudson was a American actor, but uh, yeah, I thought this was interesting. It's kind of a, almost like a horror movie in some ways, and I. I <laughs> I enjoyed it. It's one I got to get a give a rewatch to. Obviously, you know John Frankenheimer. He did like uh, the French Connection too. He directed that one. He's done, done a lot of a lot of great movies. I, I think that this he may have had, may have another one in the in the collection as well. But but I, yeah, I, I enjoyed this a lot. Uh, and I, I, I've heard a lot of people talk about this for for a few months now. And I, I just want to want to check it out. And I'm, I'm glad I did. Okay, so this fourth title is actually one I, I think is very timely. <laughs> Very interesting. It, uh, this one's uh, from 1973. This is actually the year I was born. That's a uh, spine number 1224. So obviously it's uh, around the same time as Perfect Days. Uh, but the the movie is uh, Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid. It's uh, you know directed by Sam Peckinpah. Uh, obviously, if you've seen like Straw Dogs, he, that's also in the in the Criterion Collection from 1971. He directed that one with the you know, that that one has a uh, Dustin Hoffman with the. And he also did. I think he's most famous for the movie of the Wild Bunch, which uh, is not not in the collection. But I think it, I think they should add that movie to the collection. But, but this was a uh, really very interesting. Uh, I'm not really a, a huge uh, fan of westerns, but it, but it, it, I think it's very timely when I saw this movie because uh, it, you know, it's a uh, starring uh, James Coburn as the uh, the late Chris Christopherson. Obviously, when I saw this movie, this is like maybe like two or three weeks before uh, Christopherson actually passed away. And when I looked it up, I think I think he may have been like 88 or something like that. And I, I thought, wow, he, I can't believe he's still alive. And, <laughs> and then you know, just not not too long after that, he passed away, which is you know, which is sad. But obviously, he had a, he had a great life and a, a great uh, career. But uh, also, it has Bob Dylan's in this movie as well. <laughs> Bob Dylan was a very you know famous uh, you know folk singer in, in the 60s and it carried over into in the 70s. And I uh, actually have the next movie actually kind of involves him as well, but. Uh, I enjoy this a lot. This actually has a Slim Pickens in the movie as well, and it, this is actually, I guess, the movie that uh, featured the, the the song "Knock on Heaven's Door," the the famous uh, Bob Dylan song. And it's very very timely when they when they show that in the movie. It's it's a, a great scene. Okay, so this last title was actually released in 2019. It's a uh, from the director Martin Scorsese. It's spine number 1062, and the movie is Rolling Thunder Review. This uh, and it also says a, a a Bob Dylan story by Martin Scorsese. Uh, this is really interesting because it, 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 a lot of the, the filming takes place in 1975, and I, I guess Bob Dylan back then he used to go on the road with, with the, the Rolling Thunder Review with a lot of other like famous musicians would go with him, and that's, uh, that, that's what really makes this interesting to see a lot of people. Some of them have passed away now, and some of them are a lot older now. But uh, it has a you know Bob Dylan has a Allen Ginsberg. I think he was like kind of like a political activist back then. Has a Joan Baez, uh, Joni Mitchell. There's a there's a great acoustic you know, guitar scene with uh, with Bob Dylan. It's it, it's like acoustic guitar played like really fast, almost like <laughs> it's almost like hard rock in some ways. The way she sings it, it's really great. And also has a uh, Sharon Stones in the movie as well. She was a, a young kid back then, and uh, she had interesting stories uh, with uh, her and uh, Bob Dylan. Uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, actually, has a uh, Mike uh, Mick Ronson. Uh, if you ever saw, you know, David Bowie's band, he was actually in that band. He, he actually played. I didn't know that, but he played in Bob Dylan's band as well. <laughs> so it was interesting to, to to see him, like, because I think he died sometime in like the in the seventies, maybe or, or early eighties. So to see uh, Mick Ronson playing with the Bob Dylan's band, I thought that, he, he's like a like a electric guitar player. And, uh, I just would never think that he would ever play that style, but it, obviously he, he's a musician that actually loved music, and so that's why I was there. But uh, that was a, that was interesting to, to see him in there. I wasn't expecting that. Basically, I, I really recommend a lot of these movies. Uh, uh, some of them, you know, maybe maybe not ones you would pick up right away necessarily. Obviously, uh, uh, defending your life, I would recommend to everybody. Uh, Perfect days if you're interested in like Japanese uh, cinema, definitely check that out. Or, or you know, them vendors. Uh, uh, Obviously, check 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 that one out. But it's a, I enjoyed all these seconds. It's more like a kind of like a horror movie in some ways. But uh, please, if you're not already uh, subscribed to my channel, please uh, consider doing that. Please put a thumbs up on this video. I, I really appreciate that. And everybody, have a great one.